I like chocolate ice cream. I hate chocolate ice cream. I like avocados. I hate avocados. I like oatmeal. I hate oatmeal. Which one of these statements is true? And how can you know? Well, you can take it under the effect that you can gather evidence and say, well, you eat oatmeal every day in the morning for breakfast. So you can't possibly hate oatmeal. You can also say, you never eat chocolate ice cream. So how can you maybe like it? So maybe it's true that you hate it. You can also say, you never eat avocado. So it's obvious that you hate avocado. The truth? I love chocolate ice cream, but I don't eat it because I'm trying to lose weight. I hate oatmeal. To me, it has the texture of vomit, but I eat it because it's healthy and I'm on a diet and it's easy to make and it's cheap. I love avocado, but I can't eat it because I have a severe allergy to it. Which one of those statements are true? The, the crux of it is that you as a person will have no way of knowing which any of these statements is actually true because you're not inside of me. Will you go up to a trans woman and tell her the evidence is that you're a man because you have a penis between your legs and because your birth certificate says you're a boy. Therefore, you are not a woman. We wouldn't do that in our society. Why? Because it would be considered bigoted and disrespectful and harmful and hateful and it would be a cruel thing to do. We wouldn't do that to someone because we don't know what's going on inside of them. You can't tell a trans person that they, their experience isn't real because you're, you don't understand it. I don't know what it's like to be trans. I will never know what it's like to be trans. When a trans person tells me that they don't feel comfortable in their own skin, it's a foreign concept to me. I don't understand where they're coming from, but I can have the decency to acknowledge that their experience is different from mine and respect it to an extent. Now granted, there are some people that there's a lot of controversy around transgendered issues and there are some people that may be um, claiming to be trans and not truly be trans, be doing it for attention. They call those transgenders. That could exist. But the thing is, you don't know. And when you don't know, <coughs> you don't want to be cruel to someone who could be sincere. So, uh, now I'm not saying we go around and, and, and you know, cater to everybody's in, in individual whim. But I am saying that since another human being is having an experience that you don't understand because you're not experiencing it, the most you can do, the best you can do, is say, I don't understand your experience, but I'll take your word for it. You don't like chocolate ice cream, or you do like chocolate ice cream. You don't like oatmeal, or you do like oatmeal. I don't know what it, it's like to be you. So, the same can be applied with spirituality. There are a lot of people that say there's no evidence for any of the supernatural things, the spiritual gobbledygook that exists in the world. But there are personal experiences. I've had these experiences. Many others have had the experiences. On the other side of the coin, there are many people who have never had any experiences. Do the people who have never had any experiences have the right to go to someone who has had these experiences 
and say, I haven't experienced what you experienced, therefore your experience is invalid. If that's true, if you have the right to do that, then walk up to the very next transgendered person that you meet and tell them that they're wrong. Walk up to the very next gay person that you meet and tell them that they're wrong. Being trans, being gay, these are things that we don't understand, just like spirituality, and we have to leave it to everybody's individual experience. I'm not saying you have to believe in these things. I'm saying you have to have the respect to know that someone else believes in them and to not try to force them to live their lives differently the way you think they should or to tell them that they're lying. I believe in magic. I've had magical experiences and there's many other people who do. Then there are many other people who are fakes, who are phonies, who lie and who say that they experience these things just so they can get money out of others. You don't know what kind I am. You don't know what's actually out there. But I'm a separate person from you. And my experience is mine. I don't ask that you believe it. I ask that you respect me as a person that my experience or something that I believe. And leave it at that. And when you have your experience, your own experience, I'll do the same to you. I may not understand it. I may not believe in your experience. I may not even think that your experience is interpreted correctly the way you're interpreting it. But religion, sexuality, and identity are things that are so individual that there is no debating who is right and who is wrong in these things. There is only respecting your fellow man, fellow woman. I do agree that respect is earned. But there's a certain level of respect that is earned and then there's a certain level of respect that you should give freely. The respect that you should give freely is that you can't walk up to a person and stick, their, stick your finger in their eye. You can't. That's disrespectful. That's rude. You're not, you're not respecting their physical body. Likewise, you can't walk up to somebody who's had an experience, a true experience that they believe in, and tell them, you're wrong, you're lying, you're bad, you're crazy, you're delusional, you're a horrible person, you should be stopped. You can walk up to them and say, I don't really believe your experience because I've never experienced it and it doesn't make sense to me. But that's where it ends. That's the problem I have with a lot of skeptics. They, they don't seem to have the concept of respect. They don't seem to have the concept of respect as far as trans people go some of them. They don't seem to have the concept of respect as far as other people not agreeing with them. They don't seem to have the concept of respect in a general sense and so of course they're not going to play that apply that any level of respect to someone like me. But then again consider the source. If somebody has a hard time with the basic level of respect that is due if you want to consider yourself a decent human being, why do you care what a person like that thinks anyway?